Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Performance Tester Certification. We are in chapter three talking about performance testing in the software lifecycle and continuing ahead with the part two of the 3.2 performance risk for different architectures. In our previous tutorials, we have understood about several other architectures and what kind of risk, risk are involved uh, from the point of performance. And today we'll be continuing with that ahead. The next one to talk about is dynamic cloud-based systems. Now, basically, cloud-based systems are more from the uh, scalability, scalability point of view and generally allows your you know, consumers to you know, scale up the system and the architecture at any point of time so that's where generally the dynamic stands for and cloud is always about uh, reaching to your optimum usage and giving you the freedom to expand it at any point of time so these are the system that offers the ability to scale on demand increasing capacity as the level of load increases these systems are typically distributed and virtualized multi-tier systems albeit with uh, self-scaling features designed specially to mitigate some of the performance risk associated with those architectures. However, there are risks associated with the failures to properly configure these features during initial setup or subsequent updates. The another benefit, what you get from these uh, virtualized, that is the dynamic and cloud-based uh, systems, that they are created in such a way that based on your increasing growth or number of people, who use your system, the system automatically grows and allocates enough resources so that the people can make use of it. And that's where we use the term dynamic. That means it does not remain rigid so that if suddenly your users increase, then I have some buffer for you where you can actually allocate those things and your customers can be happy, your users can be comfortable enough and having a stability on the application. But Certainly, when you talk about the static ones, they do not grow. And in fact, you have um, unexpected load on the system at any point of time. Then it just crashes or stops responding to the users at any point of time. So that's where these architectures are very helpful. But at the same time, do not underestimate the cost of it because this requires a future costing. Probably you're just prepared, but you never know where you, know, you are reaching or using the optimum part of it. The second one is, of course, the client-server system, which is a direct interaction between client and server, and you do have a different interface uh, from the client point of view, so that would be a little lighter from a UI perspective, and the server will have all the necessary uh, architecture being designed for it. <clears throat> so these are the systems uh, running on the client that communicate via user interface with single server, multiple tier server, or distributed server. Since there is a code running on the client, the single computer risk applied to that code, while the server side issues mentioned above apply as well. Now, generally, we do know that when you try to make use of any particular application like Facebook client or you know the server client, LinkedIn client, Twitter and all, these all are managing a multi-tier architecture and using distributed servers. And of course, you are just provided with a client interface which you are making use of through a user interface and you keep typing certain things and they're all validated by a middleware and everything gets processed through the servers which are like the other side of it. So generally, those basic defects or basic issues lie only from the UI point of view that to load UI, you would need your you know laptops or desktops resources to be utilized. And that's where they say that to interact with this particular product you need to have at least these many you know resources being allocated and otherwise this is just all the server side configuration which would be enough to make that experience amazing for you further performance risk exists due to the connection speed so here the major challenge will be the connection speed because for every single thing what you do we will be connecting to the server and responding back to you with data packets and uh, the speed definitely matters here and the reliability issues, network congestion at the client connection point, example like public Wi-Fi if you're using, and potential problems due to firewalls, packet inspections, and server load balancing. So the most of the issues are more, mostly related to your internet speed 
the bandwidth what you have for the internet if in case you are too crowded on the single modem you will face challenges but you cannot say that the server is not responding you have congestion on network but every time a data packet is being shared and received your firewall will act accordingly to validate it so that could also result into a poor uh, performance but again if you authorize it so that's the reason they say allow access to the site and you allow it once for all and it does just take care of it forever other thing is of course mobile applications which are completely different from all these architectures but does have some of the basic things for example these are the applications running on a smartphone tablet or other mobile devices such applications are subjected to the risk mentioned for client server as well as the browser based application in addition performance issues can arise due to the limited and variable resources and connectivity available on the mobile device here connectivity of the mobile device basically stands for the bandwidth or the speed of the internet that is like 2g 3g 4g or 5g so the type of connectivity you have it will certainly depend on that and in fact what type of device you are using and what kind of hardware resources do we have based on that also the internet can be defined or the usage or performance can be measured other than that of course uh, when it comes to mobile applications mobile applications can be of two types native or hybrid so you know that also could be a factor where you can define if uh, the app based interaction is working amazingly good but the moment you go to the browser things are different so that does consider your uh, mobile phone hardware configurations into account to define the overall performance of the final app usage more to add here of course we do have another set of architectures of course there was a long list to talk about and we are finally on the last slide deck of this particular topic that is embedded real time systems now what are embedded real time systems of course you do understand what is embedded when a software is connected or integrated with the hardware and then finally they work as one particular product so when it comes to embedded systems of course we do have performance parameters and risk to be considered so these are the system that work within or even control everyday things such as cars where we cars are basically automobiles and they have single touch of buttons and they take care of certain things within your car and do a lot of activities including the entertainment systems intelligent braking system and so on elevators traffic signals heating ventilation and air conditioning this is your hvac systems that is like centralized cooling and more so there are a lot of products all around you which works on the embedded principles these systems often have many of the risk of mobile devices because they just work like a sensor based operations including connectivity related issues since these devices are connected to the internet however the diminishing performance of a mobile video game is usually not a safety hazard for the user while such slowdowns in a vehicle braking system could prove catastrophic now of course we are just trying to compare that you know though a mobile phone is a part of the embedded system and if you talk about a car as an automobile elevator as another product is also a part of the embedded system so here if the sensors does not work properly could be you know fatal to a lot of users but if a game does not respond properly on a cell phone people are not so worried about that but here the risk is something which i need to be worrying about so a game risk cannot be given as a severity like okay if the game gets stuck at some point of time people will you know probably uh, stop using your product that's all okay but here you were talking about if what if a elevator gets stuck at certain floor and when you are climbing or when you are coming down from the you know the apartment or a building and same way what happens if your sensor stops working when you're using a car and the braking system does not apply on such scenarios it could be fatal to your user so the risk are critically handled accordingly and then we try to cover the performance of it so here performance does not mean low or high it just means it's good or it's not at all good that's it and the last but not the least we are talking about mainframe applications which are definitely used at a very very large scale and talking about the server side interactions there are applications in many cases decades old applications supporting often mission critical businesses functions in a data center sometimes via batch processing most are quite predictable and fast when used as originally designed but many of these are now accessible via apis web services 
or through their databases, which can result in unexpected load that affect throughput of, throughput of established application. Now, of course, when it comes to these data centers and cloud uh, systems which are trying to manage the system itself, and we are not talking about the server and a client relationship, we are talking about the application which are maintaining the data centers all together. And of course, they also work equally importantly to make sure that the data center is available all the time and they are being protected from security layers and nobody else can try to hack into or crash the data or probably that could lead to, to a big problem for everyone. And when you promise your users that uh, we are hosting everything on the data center and this is highly secured, highly reliable, always available, and we have a big team working behind that, then you are promising them a great performance experience. But again, things have been improvised a lot from the era like when you move from 100 years before, 100 years now, things have been definitely changing and people are trying to come up with a lot of different ideas to improvise further that how do you protect your data center and at the same time, you don't try to compromise on the performance which people make use of. Anyway, so that was all about the performance risk for different architectures as a part of this tutorial. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.